everybody. Welcome to a different super investor meeting. The special. online version. Special. On, special. That's right. The online special um, slash super investor game day podcast tied together. I'm joined by my good buddies, Rich Drake. You know the man, Eddie Gant. If you want to go laugh real quick, you can go over to my Facebook page and take a picture, <laughs> take a look at the picture I just posted of this goofy guy. So, um, Eddie wanted to do, wanted to reach out to you guys and make sure everybody was doing good. So he said, "Hey, can you come up here and make sure that um, we do an investor game day meeting? Answer some questions, probably that you guys have. We have a little bit of an agenda. We're going to open it up to some questions at the end of it." Um, I'm sure Eddie's got a lot to say, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna pass the mic over to you this time, oh big Lord. boy. Okay, I oh, better be no. careful. That sounds good. Y'all I'm already trying warning to learn. me. Y'all already warning me what to say and what not to say. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, yeah. Like as, put a cork in a as if you take up. warnings very yeah, well. Yeah. We just make All sure right. you keep your shirt on. All right. All right. We got. We got. I got probably five pages of notes up here. Uh -huh. We have so much to talk about. Um, I'll just lead off with a couple of tidbits. We've been down this path of what I'm going to call a, a tragedy, a blow up in our market. A black swan uh, event. Mm -hmm. We've been down the path before. I'm 21 years into this. You're, you're a similar number, maybe a couple more mm -hmm. than me. Um, you were one of the first people I ever met in the business. I think you know that. You know, the, you got to make adjustments. The strong have always um, come through stronger. Uh, the people not as strong, it can be rough on them in a tough time. So what we're going to talk about a lot tonight is some of the pitfalls we've seen. Let everybody know we're in business. You're in business today. Yeah, I'm in up business and today. Can, and, I want to interject yeah. something before we get too far down the road. I met you when the market was doing this. Mm -hmm. I met you. The reason why I wanted to start doing Investor Game Day podcast is because of your advice, mentorship, guidance. I was able to explode my business. You answered so many questions that I had, like, is the sky falling? Will we recover from this? How do I structure my deals? Do you think it's a good time to buy right now? Like, all those questions you kept answering for me with no agenda other than let's go to Denny's and have breakfast. Yeah. Well, in 08 to 2010, on into 2011, so we really, re really didn't snap out of that until spring of 2020. Yeah, that was, that was right. rough. We lost a huge amount of our um, industry. You know, we, you know, hard money lenders went out of business. Long-term lenders went out of business. Investors went out of business. Builders went out of business. Yeah, you keep on and on and on and on. And, Public companies. And, and, and this could happen again. Listen to us here. Maybe we'll have something that'll help you. Because I'm not planning on shutting down tomorrow. Are you planning on shutting down tomorrow? We're full speed. Yeah, we are too. I, I just got a $17,000 lumber pack delivered at my house. We're building four houses right now. Uh-huh. So yeah. We're moving. Yeah. Is our camera working? Are we? Are we up? What? What yeah, are people seeing? Are they we're seeing just here. that? Yeah, but we're up. Okay. All right. I was looking at Andy's deal there. It looked like just had the. Okay. There you go. Okay. Let's let's keep that. All right. Okay. Like, love, and share yeah. us out there yeah. to all your friends, yeah. please. Yeah. But there's so much to talk about here tonight. We're gonna go for an hour plus. Let's just. Won't you just take one of these 48 bullet points we got on these sheets here? Okay. Uh, Rich, I, you want to make an opening statement? Yeah. I kind of made one. You know, I, I agree with, with both of you. The, you know, this, this has not happened before, but this type of situation has happened before yeah. where the sky's falling, the world's mm -hmm. coming to mm -hmm. an end. Mm -hmm. We got hurricanes. We got, mm -hmm. you know, we got, you name it, the, the meltdown here, the crash here, 9-11. Everything is going to hell and mm -hmm. the world is yeah. coming to an end. Yeah. Smart people adapt. Yeah. Smart people figure out how to excel 
in tough times. Exactly they right. change their business model. They adapt their business model. I don't say they take advantage of the situation because that's mm -hmm. that's not a way to to really think of. But it. they refine and they retool. Absolutely. That's why so many, like you said, so many investors mm -hmm. failed in make they didn't to make to adjustments. They didn't. They didn't have the ability to adapt. So they were it, foreclosed on because they didn't take care of their. They they couldn't adjust to times. The news is made to be checked, not made to be watched. Well, the news so if is... you're spending all your day watching all this new stuff, oh, yeah. it's going to drive yourself well, crazy. Well, and the news is made to be clicked. All mm -hmm. they care about is how many people click because they get paid every time yeah. somebody clicks on their story. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care if it's the truth or not. Yeah. Well, that leads me, and I'll just say it briefly, and then we'll go on past it. Let's do it. This is a media event. It's not a disease event in my mind. And I have the data that backs me up on that. We're not going to eat the show up with that. Yeah, let's. But a lot of people don't agree with that. That's okay. Uh, I think I'm saying what a lot of people think, but not a lot of people say it publicly. I think it's more of a media event than it is a disease event. Yeah. And the I, CDC data backs me up on that. Yeah, I okay. uh, I am no expert in the healthcare arena. I just know that um, I have I am I think I'm pretty good at people. And I can tell you that my guys that work for me, I've got 20 people, and some of them do not have Social Security numbers, and they're not here legally. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be privy mm -hmm. to the $2,000 check. So mm -hmm. I'm here to make sure that those guys keep being paid, and I think mm -hmm. it is my job to put forth work yeah. for people to keep doing. I know you're going to be here working. Yeah. Yeah, we, All your people are here we, working. We've got roughly 23 people in this office. I've got a closing on Friday. It's not like the world is shutting mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. We've got restaurants that are just yeah. being limited to dining, yeah. not being open. Mm -hmm. But food's still being served. People yeah. are still getting food. Is it, I don't know what the deal is with y'all and toilet paper and hand sanitizer, but yeah. leave some for <laughs> me. I'm down to my last six rolls. I sure, I sure hope we don't have a diarrhea disease. We're going to run run low on <laughs> Afrin and nasal spray or something. Yeah. <laughs> so good night. All right. Let's uh, roll, Eddie, let's roll, yeah. Eddie had uh, Eddie had a couple good points. I want to run into the Eddie's got a real extensive list. Riches, I don't really understand much of. I'm just kidding. Yeah, Rich has got it's a good over list your head. Too. That's all yeah, right. Yeah, he's That's all right. It, it is okay. So let's talk about. Uh, this was a fun one. Uh, all the people who are in the mortgage industry and the realtors that were making posts when the Fed rate went to 0.25. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. explain that. Well, that's that's the Fed discount rate. Yeah. That is not the rate that's available to me. So who is borrowing from right. the Fed discount right. rate? I, a, a simple way that's to think about that rate. is that is what the Fed discount rate is what small banks borrow from big banks. And that's as simple as that. Okay. The Federal Reserve will loan to the banks of the world if they need to go to the Federal Reserve and get money mm -hmm. at now even either 0% or 0.25%. That's zero. Okay. Eddie Gant, Rich Drake, Curtis Warren can't walk in and get the 0% the money. Man, I was really way. hoping to refine yeah. my house at 0%. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so Subjects. where it does trickle down, then the banks turn around that we deal with they go by what's called Wall Street uh, WSJ Prime, Wall Street Journal Prime, WJS, Wall Street Journal Prime. Okay. All right. And they will loan us money based off of that. But here's the catch. I have a loan agreement that was not reached maturity yet that has a rate that also includes a floor rate. So I contacted three banks yesterday that's what we're going to do about adjusting. And they said, when, you're, when your current loan agreement matures. Mm, of course they did. Okay. And so I can't go get that lower rate today at Jet Lending. Unless you go to a different bank. Well, they may go to a there different bank. Go. Now okay. that, that, okay. But that's something that that's, you take you take that situation and say, process, how much though. work is it? And is it worth it's, it? It's 60 it to 90 be, days to get a loan but agreement. But it may on. be worth yeah. it. It could. Right. But the point being is that that cheap money is not available to us, the public, nor is it available to a jet lending today. Okay. Okay. Now, let me touch on just a little bit more. That's short-term money through the Federal Reserve. It does not have a direct impact on long-term interest rates for 30-year mortgages. does not. Okay. The 30-year mortgage is based on the on the 10-year Treasury note, yep. which is driven by the yield of the 10-year Treasury note, which is driven by inflation or the lack thereof of inflation. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. 
Okay, the rates are very low. I asked Clint Yates today um, with um, uh, Integrity Mortgage. He's a vendor at the RCC and a good friend and, and, and a good friend. Well, he used to be a good friend. <laughs> anyway, I think Clint told me somewhere <laughs> around FHA's was south of four yeah. for the thirty-year fix. South of four. The conventionals was close to four. And the non-owner-occupied Fannie Mae's was hovering around five. And he also expected some change there. And I don't know what the changes are going to be, and he really didn't either, but he expects some changes there. But the point being, that's low. It's historically low. It's historically low. Yeah. Okay. And so, it could be <clears throat> lower, but what I'm hearing is that because there's a run on everybody mm -hmm. putting in for applications for refis, mm -hmm. that they're bumping up almost a half a point just to, I guess, curtail because, some of the applications. Because there's too much demand. Yeah, there's too yeah, much they demand. Can't, they can't process yeah. them. Yeah. Right. But, but along the same line, and one of the things we want to really stress here, I wrote down on my wall calendar on March 9th, I wrote a big old star on that day, and I put CV19 start. Mm. That's really when it started. In the Texas. Next, and, well, for me, it started that day. That was Monday the 9th. The rodeo uh, canceled, canceled the next on day. the next day and shut the gates at 4 p.m. on Tuesday the 10th. So that's when that domino, and then the next day is when all the college sports were yep. shut down and College basketball NFL tournaments shut were, down. And, then, and NBA shut I'm sorry, down. NBA. And so, but it started, let's just call it the ninth. So we're exactly 10 calendar days. We're eight working days at the conclusion of today. Mm. We haven't seen at Jet Lending too much, almost no impact yet. I think the next 10 days is going to be very important to us mm -hmm. of what happens. What have you seen since March 9th? You know, we've seen tenants falling off, tenant uh, leads. You know what I mean? Tenants mm -hmm. looking for houses. So I haven't mm -hmm. seen a lot of activity in tenants wanting a house. I think a lot of people are just kind of staying home, uh, mm -hmm. not really focusing on things like that. Uh, but as far as business, I mean, we're, we actually sent our folks home, work from home, just, to, mm -hmm. just out of extreme caution. I think it's probably more than we probably should have done, but... We're at a hundred percent, you know, effectiveness from home. We're we're an e-based company, yeah. so it doesn't really affect us. We 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 did some very similar, uh, and I'll, I'll be straight. I did not want to do, it. but I got a lot of staff. Didn't see things the way I the way I the way I see them. Mm -hmm. Felt uncomfortable, and that's fine. Felt unsafe. So we I'm gonna use the word we accommodated them. We okay. said okay, I will make a change for you. We'll go ahead and let you work from home, um, and uh, and that's what we did today. Yeah, and we've done that. We did it a couple of days ago, but we're getting full productivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't need to be at the office to get business done. And you know, the rest of the country is yeah. pretty similar. There's mm -hmm. for most jobs, you know, unless you're actually handing somebody a yeah. plate of food, mm -hmm. you know, you can work yeah. from home. I went in early on Tuesday to the Quest IRA office and ran into Kevin. <laughs> at Quest IRA, he was like, "Yeah, they're going, uh, they're going digital with their presentation." I was like, well, "I was coming up here for an hour just to yeah. shoot the breeze with, yeah. and listen to uh, listen to Nate spill for like the seventeen mm thousandth -hmm. time." But uh, they had went to online uh, media, and I really think, like one one thing that we were talking about is like this is a time where most people, most uh, the good investors, change adapt and they That's succeed right. and That's they right. come out better That's right. i think the biggest difference like you were smart enough last year think about how different the real the the uh super investor meeting is for you now that you have and your 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 people your vendors the experience for them is completely different since we have the podcast mm -hmm. they almost like are fighting to want to be on the podcast so they can have a little bit of a five-minute commercial about their business once mm -hmm. a session. Mm -hmm. Now, I think what people really need to fine-tune is I was talking to real estate agents. Uh, my, my agent, his name's Evan. I was like, Evan, if I was you right now, what I'd be doing is micro-target video marketing. Mm -hmm. I know Rob 
does a he used to do video marketing every day. Like people <clears throat> want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And the way to get through to people is either you're going to be walking the streets looking for deals, trying to help people out, or you're going to do some videos, let people know that you're out, out there actively trying to buy property. That's what I'd be working on. It's my online presence. It will. Let's, let's talk closings. Talk it. I talked to our, our two uh, go-to title companies that we have at the RCC, Patton. Okay. I talked to Eric uh, Fontenot over at Patton. I talked to um, Alex Nicole Baker over at Capital Title. Need a refill? Maybe. <laughs> Johnny, I'm trying not I, to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you pass some Miller okay. Lite? No, no, I actually right. am trying to Talk interrupt. Talked to both of them. You would have thought they got together and read from the same sheet. Okay? The, the, the feedback, the feedback was almost identical. All right. Both offices are going to uh, remote workers for, it sounded like for most personnel except maybe the escrow officers. All right. Both companies were going to primarily, it sounded like, remote closings via, via uh, notary services. Okay. Going to that. So they're not bringing people in into the office. Ooh, okay. Uh, Easy, said good. Their, Easy. Their That's business, much easier. Business was brisk. Um, basically promised hard that through this process that if we had contracts, buys or sales, they were going to be there to close them. Okay? So the question gets raised, some of the counties may be shut down in the public records. What they said and I may be off just a little bit on the terminology, but the underwriters for, for the title companies were going to stay in the game with them, underwrite, most of the docs are electronically filed, and if there's a delay between closing and filing and acknowledgement of filing, that the underwriters, and that's what I understood, I'm not a title person, was going to... I guess, lack of a better word, honor and ensure the closing. Cover that even, risk. Cover that risk, even though there may be a delay. So both title companies, which are a huge amount of their businesses, is our, our world, our investor mm -hmm. world, are saying it will be business, not going to interrupt their business to close our deals. And I'm not going to say it's going to be the same, going to be better, but they're going to be there with us. Well, one of your... Uh one of your customers just said that uh, they got an offer accepted today on the, the office building that they put an offer in. Oh, Jason. So, no. I mean, okay, good some Jason. of the biggest buyers in Houston are still yeah. out there actively yeah. buying. Yeah. Well, buying I, commercial. I am too. Yeah. Well, I, I, bought, I bought two, I think I bought two houses since Monday the night. Yeah. We got a corner phrase for that Monday the night. We got a corner phrase. I don't know what it is. You can't call it Black Monday. That's already used. But anyway, um, 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 I'm, I'm, well, I talked to a lot. About, yeah, I talked I mean, to a lot of homebuyers. Businesses home out there. Well, yeah. what are you going to change up? I, I think a lot of people oh. who are watching the podcast, mm -hmm. we have uh, over 100 people watching right now. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them that you're doing right now in terms of your strategy for buying? We're doing several things. Uh, one is I work this scenario into my pitch when Absolutely. I'm making an offer. Okay. Sorry about that ringer. I thought it was on vibrate. I worked that into the pitch. I'm adjusting my numbers down. And here's why. Okay? And you might say something like, you might say something like, tomorrow's an unknown. What I'm telling you because here. Because it truly is. Is, is I'm, I'm available here. I'll turn it down. Let me, let me finish this thought and I'll turn it down. Um, sorry about that, everybody. Really thought I had it on vibrate on silent. Tomorrow's an unknown. I'm close. I'm ready to go today. I can't promise you that if you don't take this offer that I'm going to be good tomorrow, tomorrow, the next day. And I've got my funds ready to go. I can close and my title company is ready. That's current appointments. We're going to be initiating an effort to call. And we always call and follow up old offers, but we're going to put a little more enhancement into that. Yeah, I highly recommend that. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. 
Everybody yeah, that up. turned your offers down for the last year, you need to pick up the phone and call them. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of stuff you do when you adapt, right? Yeah. You think about, well, right. what can I do? I have a, a good buddy. He told me today, he said he's had more appointments this week than the last mm -hmm. two weeks combined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same amount of advertising. Yeah. yeah. Double the appointments. What is that telling you? Probably not a lot of guys out there flush with cash ready to do some advertising. So if I was a wholesaler, mm -hmm. I'd be out there doubling down. Work, work well, a lot in. of uncertainty in the public as well. Well, work it into the, you know, there's two things. There's getting, to the, there's getting the opportunity and there's what you do with the opportunity. I'm kind of focusing on right now in my conversation what you do when you get the opportunity mm -hmm. is you build this into your pitch, mm -hmm. you know, when you're at the kitchen table or the living room couch and you're talking about why you're offering $50,000 for a $130,000 house. You build that into the conversation why you're sure. there or why you're at that point. And use it to your advantage is what I'm trying to say. Bring the numbers down. What are you seeing different for uh, coming up with renters? Well, and landlords. I think rentals and buy and hold is going to be a significant uh, opportunity. There's um, there's going to be a lot of money coming out of equities. A lot of people are scared to death of the market. They're selling. I mean. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to sell now, but they're doing it. They're panic selling, right? And these folks are not going to want back in the market because they're afraid. So there's going to be money on the sidelines, and what are they going to do with it? Hopefully, and we, we've seen it before, it mm -hmm. comes to real estate. So I think now is time to be more aggressive buying. Now is the time to buy more properties because I think in the mid to longer term, uh, values will go up because there are going to be more people pouring their money into rental properties and to owner finance notes into flips, what have you. So there's just going to be this shift. How, how hard has it been to convince people you're not a genius in the stock market? Mm -hmm. Everyone's a genius for the last how many years? Mm -hmm. Almost 10 years, right? Yeah. I was the smartest guy in the world. You know, all you got to do is buy Apple and watch mm -hmm. it go up, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now everybody's looking again and going, hmm, maybe I ought to look for yields somewhere else. I'm going to say some of the same things, just a little bit different way and a different terminology. We started this, one of the things we talked about early on was the other big uh, events, we called them tragedies, I think, or or things where the, the economy was cratering or the real estate was cratering or 9-11 was a, was a sure. devastating thing. Most Even the oil of, crash in the yeah, 80s. Yeah. You know? Most of those things, most of those events triggered... Uh, a, uh, uh, An a surge in rental properties, an opportunity to buy properties at a, more of a discount and more demand. Word. When when people when when you have a tragedy like this, more people rent. Right, right, one hundred percent. People's credit rent. is going to be. Well, what did Clint here. say in the meeting? He said that he really thought that the lending criteria for people who are going to be first-time buyers is going to tighten again. They've already tightened, he said. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so if that's the case, there's going to be a yeah. lot more people out there that are going to need yeah. rental, re rental property yeah. coming yeah. out of this. Yeah. Every event we talked about, the renting um, industry, the landlord industry excelled, is what I'm trying to say. Every one of them. You can't, you can't pick one of those out and say, oh, the rental property was bad during that time. And, and no. you talk about that yeah. on previous podcasts. You said yeah. one of the biggest uh, change or, or the the biggest benefits you had mm -hmm. in the 08, 09, mm -hmm. and 11 was you took a ton of foreclosures back. Mm -hmm. And at first you were like, oh, we got to start selling these off. But then you were like, well, we can just turn these into rentals, have mm -hmm. these paid off in 15 years. We put two signs in the yard. One said for sale by owner, owner finance. The other one said for lease or for rent. And whichever, whichever, one, whichever first. one came first is what we did. What we did. And that's true. What we did, too. You know? Would and you say that that was your biggest ticket? That was, I, I think that was your golden ticket, not anything else. But yeah. and, it, and it wasn't just me. It was, it was Johnny and I and, yeah. you know, some others in on that deal. But uh, that's, that's, that's what we did. And we, because I, I looked at it this way. Um, we, had it, we had vacant houses, get bodies in them. You know, Somehow. You, you know, get, you, at least you're getting some income, and you halt. The day you put a body in there, you halt theft and vandalism. Stop and so the bleeding, You too. stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. You know, you can handle 
you can handle a hundred dollars negative on a house. You can't handle twelve hundred dollars negative on eighty of them and strip all the copper right. out. You the can't handle thing. that. I don't care who you are. You can't handle that. Right. You can handle a whole bunch of hundred dollar negatives. So let's talk about this. Yeah. You and you and Johnny specifically are pretty big landlords now. Mm-hmm. Folks are going to have to t- mm-hmm. deal with their tenants and mm-hmm. and have a plan to say, mm-hmm. hey. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna work with you here, yeah. so they don't fail and fall on their face and end up getting well, evicted in the long run. You know, there's there's yeah. a lot of things to think about here because if you just go in and you lay down the, lay down the law, these folks, there's folks huh. that don't have jobs today. Well, what does well, the hold on, hold on, I'm gonna do? It. You got to divide them into two categories. Yeah. Oh, those yeah. that don't oh, have jobs and yes. can't pay, and those that's going to use this opportunity to say they can't. That's why you got to have a plan. You know, absolutely. But and what does the JP and I, and I'm court say, say? You got. The JP clan ain't going to say nothing right now. It's closed. Shut down. <laughs> there you go. They are done for a while. They're holiday. Hey, yeah. Brent. Judge Morgan is playing golf tomorrow. You know, he ain't he ain't at JP court tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I'm just telling yeah. you. Unless right. he's got a unless he's got a little one of those little small cases, you know. It, it would just be amazing to uh-huh. me that if the people who I'm renting houses to yeah. do, aren't the same people who are either serving food at the grocery store or, or uh, mm-hmm. some sort of medical tech yeah. professional. Yeah. The, these are the people who I'm renting to. I'm not renting to some middle-tier management oil and gas executive that's on furlough, but that's well, just my, that's well, my, my and, people. And I think Rich and I are on the same page here. What we've talked about, what I'm going to call massage the tenant. Mm-hmm. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. You know. You know? What you got? Yeah, if you can't pay a thousand, can you pay me nine fifty? Well, I and, mean, I don't, you know, I, and no. we've talked about this: is the 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 unemployment is kicking in pretty robustly, so they're going to have some income. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be some really good tenants that have been great mm-hmm. tenants and great folks for years, and they don't even know what unemployment is or how to yeah. do it. So we're no. we're working on how to help our tenants to file if they don't know how. And we're also working on, well, if you make 50% of what you made before, then you need to pay 50% of what you paid before. Something like that. I mean, we're looking at different ways to work with folks. And we have a different, you know, paradigm because I I own some rental properties, but also manage for other folks. So, you know, i got another level of complexity there. But for you guys. I'm concerned about it. Absolutely. In the, in the short it. term. Yeah, in the short term. Only in I, the short term. I'm going to throw my other. I talked about the, the, the CDC diet and how I feel about this deal. I could be wrong on this, but I think I think this deal is short term. I think we're out. I sure out hope it. so. I think we're out of it sometime in April, and I, I believe that. I'm not saying we're going to bed. I'm saying I, that's kind of what I feel. I don't want to stay in my house yeah. longer than that. Yeah. So I, I want to go back to the restaurants. So we're going to see. Right. Yeah. So we're going to see, and and that's just not for the show. But I feel so sorry for the for the service staff yeah. out there that's in this restaurant and bar business. Most of them folks are not millionaires. I mean, let's face it. I mean, they, they, they you know, they, they work in class. Right. My, you know? my, my customers in the Heights, they are the small business yeah. restaurant mm-hmm. owner. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, it's on the news. Uh, Truth Barbecue just went in and they're like, they're fighting. Uh, they're fighting Mayor Turner and saying, hey, we're going to go stay open. Yeah. They just posted yeah. out a deal saying they're doing buy one, get one free burgers tonight. So Sign yeah. me up. Uh, I just sold them their I, house, built them their house. I heard the fine was $2,000. I don't know if that's if that's real or not. I don't know if that means per day, per month, per week. I don't know. But uh, there were some posts out there today. I think V. Lee did one said, if I owned a restaurant, yeah, I'd just pay the fine and stay open. Right, right. Yeah, okay. You'd be packed. Huh? Yeah, you would be packed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'll turn down the volume. So, so, so um, anyway, it's this. I, I read Trump's. I read the news on Trump's deal today. No foreclosures. No, uh, no, no evictions. It's very. It's very broad. I didn't like that. Very broad. So I don't know if yeah, that. Pretty vague. Yeah. All the guidance yeah, coming out of the government's pretty been pretty vague. I really. So feel I don't like know it. how it's going to be yeah. implemented. I don't know but, how he's going to implement that against hard money. Well, if he says you can't foreclose on any residential property, that would loop us in. If he says you can't foreclose on says, any owner-occupied, yeah. you know, bar that's covered mm-hmm. under the Dodd Frank, well, that changes. That's a game changer. So, we'll just have to see. We um, 
we, we, we do pretty well on our collections and accounts receivable here. We'll have to see what happens here. And you, we don't know. That, that's a big unknown right there. For you, us. You've always been, um, like you and I talked about this at the Astros game. You were, when we both spoke at the, uh, the Quest Expo, mm -hmm. you and V. Lee were sitting in front. You turned around to me and you were talking and you said, I tell you what, I don't know one person who's been paying my bills that I would, because you were upset at one of the lenders, one of the hard money lenders that was there at Quest, said, well, if someone's paying and it comes up to the end of their term, I'm foreclosing. I'm going to take back mm -hmm. the property. Mm -hmm. And you you, and you and said that Blake got really upset at him, and you told me why. You said, in all the time that Johnny and I have been doing this, if someone is paying their bills or trying to pay their bills, we have never foreclosed on them. Yeah, and I, I think my exact words have always been, we've never called a note there it is. just because it matured if they were making their payments. Yes. Not in the history of jet lending have we ever done. Paid your insurance and paid your light bill and paid to keep the yard. And the next month, you're into it for a little more, and it just keeps worsening. So one of the key things you got to do if the market tanks on us is if you're into a house for too much, rent it. Yeah. Rent it. Simple. Or you, depending on where you got your money from, you might be in a position to own or finance it and, and, uh, and, and, and what I call note your way out of it, and you could hold that note or maybe sell that note, but... The key thing is don't get caught with a huge inventory that you got too much in it and can't sell them for what you got in them. You got to run. Let's and talk. then you immediately adjust your numbers on your buys. That is the way you avoid this. And not enough people reacted quick enough for you to react quick enough in 08. Yeah. What do you I think agree. about the price of oil? Jeez, well, I, oh, Pete. It's a problem. Um, <clears throat> I talked to three bankers yesterday, like I said earlier. All three, and again, it's like they're reading the same notes from each other. None of the three was concerned about real estate. All three were concerned about oil and gas. All three. Okay? Now, here's what we got going for us that we used to not have going for us. And I'm not an oil and gas expert by no stretch of the imagination. But I do know this. When oil goes as, as low as it's going, the byproducts, in the process become cheaper for them and they do well on the chemical side. So that offsets it to a certain degree. And I'm not about to sit here and give you a presentation on the inner works of that, but I basically know we're better off than we used to because now all the byproducts sure. are manufactured at a lesser price and they excel on the chemical side. Most of the plants have a refinery side and the chemical side. So they may be losing money on the refinery side, but they make a ton of money on the chemical side. That doesn't, that, help, that doesn't help the guys that are straight up oil, oil no, companies. But it does help the Houston economy. Sure. Because you got a, a you got a deficiency here, but you got a strength here. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm in no way saying it's a good thing. I'm saying it's, it does offset a little bit. Have you, that, have you seen any of your sales sides have any issues with the borrowers wanting to postpone or bust out because they're of, of concerns? Not, and if anybody has, post here, and we'd like to talk yet. about it. Not yet, um, but I'm I'm concerned about it. And, yeah, we've and, we've we've reached out to all yeah. of our buyers and said, hey, you yeah. still on track to close yeah. on the 27th? Yeah. You still on track to close on this date? Because mm -hmm. we want to make sure we're good to go. But if anybody yeah. has any I, of that stuff, we'd like to talk about since, that. Since the Monday the ninth, I have bought two houses, and I have contracted three for sale. All three that I contracted was owner occupant buyer, yeah. so that was people that was out shopping and yeah. somewhat at least those three were undeterred, but. I think next week is going to be a bigger indication of what we got more than what we've already had. I, I'm closing. Uh, I'm closing an owner occupied flip. I, I got out of my loan. I've been in it for since mm -hmm. 07. I paid it all the way down 50 percent of the oh, greater than that. I owed 78 on it. I sold it for 195. Mm -hmm. I'm just. Trying to pour cash into the system to because I think right now is getting ready to be a huge time to buy. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. if you adjust your numbers, you got you cannot go in there buying. In my opinion, you cannot go into an appointment tomorrow and buy off the numbers from the first week of March. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, like you used to. Right now, some wholesalers will do it because they're just going to go in and contract it anything they can, like they always have, and hoping they can flip it. Well, I remember in 09 and 010, instead of looking back 
uh, six months. We started looking back 90 days. Mm -hmm. Then we started looking back 30 days. Mm -hmm. I, I, I yeah. think this is like a month to month. Let's see, what's, let's see what the numbers are doing right. to drive your values. All right. All right. Let me tell you this, and I'm going to tell everybody out there this one. I'm going to ask you a question. Neither, you're not going to know the answer, I don't think. Maybe you will. 25,044. 25,044. What is that number? I know Active what it is. listings. Yeah, you heard me talk about it. <laughs> no, I didn't. But that's what it is. You said 55,000 yeah. was the yeah. highest listing amount yeah. on HAR yeah. when we were at your 25, office. 25,044. That was it an hour ago. Okay. We're plus or minus 10 or 20 of that number probably to right now. Sunday, that number was 25,211. So we come down 170. And that's a little bit surprising, to be honest with you. But it's also too short of a window to get a, a true measure. Right. It's too narrow. It'll of a be window. interesting next week or two. So everybody out there needs to clue in on that number. There's no other measurable out that there seems to be that really tells low. the story. Twenty five thousand is not low. No. Nah. No. No. It's I, a, I don't know. It's I, almost medium. That's probably. That's probably. I didn't look at days on market. That's four and a half to five, four and a half probably. I'm getting the four. It's in the fours probably. But we still have a huge right. housing shortage, right. at least for, you know, well, um, the entry level buyer. Well, well, yeah, and, and you always will. Yeah. You always will. I mean, I mean, I looked at a house. I didn't buy it yet, but I looked at a house over at Tidwell May in Wayside, and and you know the comps are just way higher than they used to be. The the lower end market. The last 24 months has appreciated more than I've ever seen it in my 21 years. Oh, me too. Okay, so I have two questions and this, for you. There's one simple reason for that. Domain, I mean, a supply. If you were a flipper today, where would you be focusing on? And as a landlord, where are you going to focus on? Okay, well, I have a, I have a, a very vague answer to that. Okay. And I focus on wherever I can make a profit. So I don't, I don't, I don't go focus on that area necessarily. I go where the lead is because yeah, we do mass uh, advertising. As a flipper, you we, have to. We we go to, we go to where the lead is. The lead may come from River Oaks. It may come from MLK. We don't know where that lead's coming from till it till it arrives. So mine's a little different now. Other people farm, and I understand that, and they farm. But but you're still going to say at the same same areas. Well. You Grocery know, stores, <laughs> yeah. schools. Yeah, I know you, your HEBs and your schools, and you always, I always like to hold where there's. First, some people don't think I'm a hypocrite. The the best place to buy a rental property is where there's a good high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, for appreciation, and they stay rented. But when you look back to the history of Eddie Gant and Johnny Hayes, most of our rentals are houses we either foreclosed on or, <laughs> or or you know houses that didn't sell. If you look at us, this group, big group of houses. Well, because like you said, from. you didn't go out farming rental properties. Yeah. 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 We just, you just, if we foreclose on a house that's rented and you go over and check it out and the, the tenant's there and they, they want to stay and you look at it and the, it's clean and they're not tearing up the place, what do you do? You keep them. Right. Right. You know? 100%. And it's, it, it's kind of a no-brainer, you know, but that's what we do. But, but for the other folks, I mean, if you're going to. Uh, there's so many areas to farm out there, but I'm going to tell you, the the lower end markets the last 24 months, it's unbelievable how much they have appreciated. What we used to pay 10 to 34, we now pay 50 and 64 for and the really used, bad ones. Yeah, and what we used to sell for 70, 80, 90, we're selling for 110, 120, 130, 140, maybe even 150 in these areas. Just a few years later, and it's all about one word. Supply. There's no supply of inventory. Anymore. Well, you build houses for a living. Yeah. yeah. You build nice houses, though. Yes. Yes. But if I you do. said, you know what, I'm going to build the cheapest house I could build, you ain't going to build a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house because you can't make any money. Well, it costs too much to get yeah. the lot ready. Yeah. It costs too much regulation, too much of this and that. You're going to build a two fifty house, right? Right. Because you can make a couple bucks. No one's building the hundred fifty thousand dollar house, so. Those hundred thousand dollar houses are creeping up to the hundred and fifty level, mm -hmm. so there's, a, like Eddie said, significant appreciation still to be had, all over town. 
What do you guys think that the biggest change going forward in Houston is going to be? Because I think that there is a glaring disparity of uh, production made products, ready made products here in America. What do you think is going to be the biggest boom coming out of this besides real estate? I don't know. Don't really care. To be honest with you, because I'm I'm in real estate. I'm a real, real estate, estate guy. <laughs> right, but <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not being smart. Well, right. I, I've I, got one. I've got know, an interesting I thing. I don't know and how many companies are working remote today versus yesterday. Yep, mm-hmm. I think so too. How many people are going to realize? Huh, I kind of like this better. What's going to happen to commercial real estate? That could be a big negative for commercial real estate as people realize that my company's just about as efficient remotely, and I don't have to pay rent. Yep. I think that's something that that's going to very quickly happen because people are going to realize man, so many companies are working remote today that never considered it. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think those this, companies this, may may think this, huh. this is what's going to happen with our short term here. Let's just talk short. People short out there, term? some people out there watching this are worried about what's going. What's on. up, AC? Here, here's what, at some point in time, some point in time, we're going to snap out of this. Yeah, we don't know if it's going to be April, May, June, or later. We don't know. I'm guessing it's going to be April. Okay. All right, but this is what you're going to see, in my opinion. Interest rates are going to stay low or go lower. For a while. Uh You're going to see the experienced investor make adjustments and perform at a high level. They're going to lower their offers. They're going to go hard after these houses. They're going to buy them. Okay, and then they're either going to rent them or they're going to they're going to Get them on the market and sell them. And you got to watch what's going on. The biggest unknown is what's going to happen for the retail sales. That's the biggest unknown. But we, the, the positive thing we got going is if we snap out of this in the next 60 days, you're entering the peak sales season of most years. So that's what you got that going for you. Okay? And if you get a bunch of inventory and can't move it, and that 25044 starts taking off like a rocket, you better become a landlord or you better become a bigger landlord than you are because that's your only exit unless you go a route you're talking about, about owner financing them, and that depends on where you got your money to buy them from. Mm-hmm. And you have money to, buy, to lend to people to do that. Well, you're talking about owner financing, you're, you're noting them out. Right. Yeah, but yeah. The big thing is where did you get the money to buy the house from if you got it from a short-term lender, a la a jet lending, you may not be able to do that with that note. You can certainly do uh, rental, though. You guys can work with that. Yeah. Got rentals are rentals are going to explode. But you're going to have long-term but, money for people. Oh, we got it now. Yes, and we're yeah. doing a lot of it. You know, um, you know, and for for the landlords, that that's either a landlord, a landlord that's already an existing landlord, or a new landlord. You're looking for money. You know, you can you can chop it up really in about three areas where you're gonna get your money. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Let's just talk about that. You can go to talk about Clint Lake, Clint Yates earlier with Integrity Mortgage doing uh, doing a, a Fannie Mae loans for nine owner occupied, cheap. But you got it's Thank a full you. doc and you got to prove your income. You got to show everything. It's a very harsh underwriting procedure. Mm-hmm. That's one. Go to community bank. Okay, that's where we go. We built our business around community sure banks. Did. We did too. And and it's a great place. It's the money's cheap, but you're not going to cash flow as well because the community bank's only going to give you a 15 or 20 year am. They're not going to give you a 30 year am. And you're going to have a five year balloon, and you got to be willing to take that risk for the five year balloon. And again, it's a harsh underwriting, which has been changed lately. A lot of them are going to a five year reprice. Which is that's nice. Right. That's right. Which is saves yeah. everybody time, yeah. effort, money. Yeah. That's right. But anyway, go yeah. ahead. Sorry. But 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 again, it's a it's a harsh underwrite. And then every sixty days, you got to turn in your financials. Every quarter. Yeah, every, every quarter. Every quarter. Every quarter. Every quarter. It's high maintenance. Yeah. It's high maintenance. And the other way is the Wall Street money that jet lending plays with, and it's what we call a non QM, a non qualifying mortgage, mean non qualifying own income, and your underwriting is based on debt service coverage ratio. Credit and loan to value. I didn't say income. And those are your three. And that's where we close a lot of loans. And they're lower rate than you think. Last month, we were closing most of these in the sixes. 
much not, time. Not bad. Not bad for not sh proving your income. Right. And you get a 30-year fix. Don't have to worry about a balloon. It's fixed. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it, it's all Wall Street money. Okay? You didn't have those lenders well, and I, in two, I, 2015. I'm going to guess that, that there's going to be more of that money available, too. Because Wall Street is, mm -hmm. even though they're, they're Wall Street, they're going to be scared of the market, too. Yeah, they are. So they're going to need yield. Um, like I said, there may be an opportunity in the owner finance. I keep going back to owner finance, but mm -hmm. you know, and I'm 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 managing rent houses, but owner finance is a, an opportunity. There could be people paying premiums for this paper that's at nine, eight, nine, ten percent interest rate because there's they're going to be begging for yield. So <coughs> I, I think there's going to be opportunity there, but the real stupid money will be in rental property because you'll be able to buy them cheap and you'll be able to hold them and. Are we going to have a recession? Probably. Is it going to be 10 years? Probably not. Is it going to be six months? Probably. I think it's going to be a very short-term deal, and then when the recovery happens, it's going to happen fast and hard, and everybody that yeah. takes advantage of it today and gets some property now is going to see that appreciation. I agree with the fast and hard, and I, I think it's going to be sooner. Than the recovery expect. is we'll going to see. be quick. We'll, we'll see. I, the market, the, the economy was too strong uh, pre-CV-19. And again, which is a, a media and, event. And the stock market didn't crash because of, of fundamentals. The stock market crashed because of uncertainty in the country. People get scared. So once, the, mm -hmm. once things settle down, I think mm -hmm. the stock market itself will recover pretty quickly as well. Yeah. I'm not yeah. selling because yeah. I waited too late to sell. So yeah. Well, I so. think a lot of people look at all the layoffs. They look at all of the, the hysteria going on because mm -hmm. they watch too much news. And mm -hmm. they, they wonder, well, what are people going to do? Well... It seems like everybody right now, I mean, you have one Texas distillery in Houston just changed their entire production to hand sanitizer. I mean, people are getting ready right now, and this is why Smart I was asking. Smart people adapt. This is why I was asking you about where do you think the next boom is? Because if I am a buyer, mm -hmm. I am looking for areas around warehouses now. If there are houses around where I think that the forklift driver that is on furlough because the Port of Houston is not taking any entry in from China. I'm, and now he doesn't, he's moving 25 things, a, you know, a day versus 140 like they were. I'm thinking that those people are going to start driving forklifts and for Houston and Texas made product. I think that people are going to come back with a, a vengeance. I mean, you can't, we, one thing that we've learned out of all this is somebody's got to start making face masks here in Houston <laughs> because there is a shortage somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Alex, you or Johnny want to come in and add anything that I hadn't brought up or Rich hadn't brought up? Come on in. Come on in. And I'll say one thing for Alex takes my seat here is uh, I sure hope we have our April meeting. Because we're going to set a record for an attendance because Mark Dotcher's going to be oh, there. Oh, man, it's going to be great. I the am economist. Good. I was excited to see Mark as it was, and now, yeah. good he's, night. If, we have, if we're able to have the April meeting, Dotcher's going to be here. And I bet he's working on a new presentation as we sit here and talk. Right. Uh, well, he's remember his last it. presentation? Yeah. He was like, we were, yeah. <laughs> we were yeah. starting our descent. <laughs> we were on final approach. We were on I, final I think, approach. I think we, I think we landed. <laughs> <laughs> I think God was going to say we, we lost an inch. I think we inch. landed. <laughs> I think we landed. But well, uh, I think something else we talked about real quick. I'm going to turn my be seat over to Alex for Before a you while. leave, yeah. real quick. I'm not going anywhere. I'm the just government's going. not going to let this just collapse and everything yeah. go to hell. They're going to prop it up. They're going to they're going to help the airline well, industry. They're yeah, going to help the not, hotel right. industry. They're not just going to let well, this just go to hell. Well, we got to watch the. Old, we got to stop panicking. Remember, I said the twenty five thousand oh forty four actors is the key number to watch. I think the other one is is watch interest rates. But I know they're staying low. I mean, they, yeah. they ain't going to raise interest rates. Is oh, not gonna I'm go happy up. about it too. All right, and then the other number is unemployment. We've been running essentially zero for a long time. Essentially. Anybody who wants a job can have one. And for all practical purposes, we've been running at 0%, you know, unemployment. Okay? You know, that's going to that's gonna yes. register now on the, on the gauge anyway. Yeah. I don't know where we're going to be. 
But uh, Alex, I you think come it's in be and temporary. you take my spot and offer your words of wisdom. And then if Johnny has oh, something. Oh, Lord, words of wisdom for my <laughs> Alex, really? That's some funny <laughs> stuff there. To that point. Oh. Golly, we, we're desperate, aren't we? Well, you know. Well, you're all techie, though. We appreciate all the hard work getting this thing set up. Really do. No problem. Um, it's, a, it's an important meeting everybody waits for every month. Uh, there's a lot of great content that comes out. This meeting really, I think, um, puts that fire back into a lot of people saying, where should, you know, where, you know, where, where should I go? What should I do? You know, networking. There's a lot of action that's going on um, online right now. Give some germs right now. You... So, but, um, but it was important to, to get it back out and, um, and to network for people to, um, to get them what they need. Uh, just like you said, like, you know, with the uh, tech side of things, you know, what we've done here is we have a completely mobile platform with a secure server. So all of our people and all of our uh, employees and investors, we haven't lost one step. We still are closing just as much as anything. Yeah, I'll and, say the same for yeah. us. We, we're, we're an e-based company. Yeah. We have... One filing company. It's full of uh, filing company. One filing cabinet. It's full of office supplies. Yeah, I mean, everything's on the cloud. Right. Everything here. We, we're basically a paperless company, except for the last thing you got to sign. Except for dealing with Eddie and his notepads. Oh, well, it, that's a special. That's a special. He's time. special. Andy, <laughs> also Andy Helms. Thank you very much for all the hard work. He's uh, over there. Uh, don't talk too the bad about me. I'm still here. <laughs> oh shit. Andy, thank you. Yeah, Andy just uh, Andy always does great. He work. gets it done. And, and if anyone wants What's to up, know, John? Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free and ask now on the thread. Rich has got it up, and he can read it out for anybody if you have any questions. I have one question. Why is it taking you so long to finish the treehouse? <laughs> yeah, he's building I, a I tree keep house. watching. It looks great. I, I'm in between siding choices. Okay. Uh, because I have to watch the weight. Are you decorating, really? Yeah. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, yeah, that, makes that makes sense. That makes sense. So, I mean, to add siding to that, as I gotta, I gotta watch the weight. So, I'm in between siding choices. Yeah. If anyone's not <laughs> a friend uh, on Facebook yeah. with Alex, Alex is building your daughter. Yeah, my both daughters. Yeah. Yeah, both of his daughters. He's building a treehouse. It's really cool looking. Uh, I've always wanted to do a treehouse or some sort of like little tiny home project. Yeah. I'm jealous. And it's, I mean, people are like, "Why is it taking so long?" First of all, I'm five five, all right, and I'm one man, all right, <laughs> and, 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 and I used eight or half a man and half half. Yeah. Damn, I, that was just, that was. You, you gave me us. the layup. I, yeah. I took the shot. <laughs> but it's just so. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. The girls are helping, but I'm in between siding. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. I am. St I, I, like I said, I personally, I have uh, four houses that I'm in the knee deep in the middle of production. Mm -hmm. I have uh, two clients that are. Uh, their husband and wife, they're both in oil and gas. None, they are saying, go as fast as you possibly can because we're just ready to sell our three-story townhome. Mm -hmm. So they're like, just build. We are not worried at all. It, our company is well yeah. cash flowed. We're, we're doing good. So there's a lot of that that's out there that's still going great. Um, I think, like Eddie's saying, a lot of this is just hysteria mm -hmm. and panic. I mean... No one said anything. Like, where did the cough of fever and shortness of breath lead anyone to say, What's up, Ryan? We're bum-rushing Kroger for some toilet paper. I don't know. I, I, people ask me a lot of questions about it, and I, I just say, like, I don't know. Just toilet paper's not what you need. But um, <laughs> it's, it's just not. Unless you're full of, oh, never mind. Well, yeah. Besides working at home, have you changed anything? Uh, no. And you know what uh, was really nice is that all of our loan officers, and I'll name them out, um, Rob Trigg, uh, Cody Lewis, Kevin Messer, uh, Trey Davis, uh, Taylor Harmon, uh, Keith Roberts, uh, all of those guys have really stepped up because there's a lot of, um, there's a good, it may be easy for us to be mobile mm -hmm. and, and cloud-based and stuff like that, but some people aren't. So they've really stepped up to, to, to field all the calls, walk everybody through, make sure they feel secure and stuff like that. So that's one thing I wanted to tell. Our staff really uh, stepped up to, um, to provide for the clients that were runs nervous about what to do in this type of market. And then getting that comfort to say, you know what, I'm going to still make some money in this. Well, when, you, when you're buying now, I think a lot of folks don't have their 
uh, finger on the pulse like you guys do. So it's it's nice to be able to call Jet and go, well, what do you think? I got to send a contract mm -hmm. for X. Have you seen any, anything in this neighborhood? And you guys will have more data than most. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we, we definitely don't want you to get into a bad deal. Same thing for us on the rental side. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're watching every day, and, you know, the tenant leads are down. But I tell you what, when the prices of the real estate dip temporarily, which is going to be, in my opinion, very temporary, mm -hmm. uh, it's time to grab it. And uh, you know, folks got to live somewhere. Yeah, that's, you know, but you know, what's the one thing they're not making anymore? Land. Anymore, yeah. Well, and they're not making estate. houses yeah. under 200000 They ain't either. making that any either. Those days are gone. So, Those are gone. Yeah, that is yeah. true. Mm -hmm. So what is something that you would suggest uh, your guys do right now in order to take advantage of opportunities that are out there? One of the things, and it's not just because, you know, we're jet lending, but I'd like, you know, of course, get pre-approved with us, but get your, get your finances in order to strike and buy that property, get it under contract. This is a time right now where you're gonna start seeing properties come up and you need to be ready, just mm -hmm. as ready as before to make a, a quick executive type decision, work your numbers, is this profitable, get it under contract. So if you are into buying any type of real estate right now, whether it be um, rentals with our short-term uh, products and then turn them into a 30-year product, um, if you're flipping, even our guys that are wholesaling properties, get your clients approved so they can lock the property down so we can close three days from clear to close from title and appraiser report in. Because just because there may not be as many of the other investors out there, it's still going to go quick. So get ready. What do you think that you should do if uh, the one thing that's limiting you on pulling the trigger is maybe 30000 bucks? Like, you know, they, you, they don't like, have... Like, I don't have the money to front the first draw to get going. Well, one thing you can do is you can just do a no-draw loan, and um, that's where we partner you with Fast Track Remodeling, who's, okay. who's one of our vendors. Right. And when you close the loan, we actually start the rehab process with Fast Track and give them the money. So you don't need any money on hand. All you need is just enough to float your Interest monthly payment. payment. Yep. So I'll make sure that do you if you had to hold this property for six months, could you? Yes. And that if you were coming out of pocket, if if you if you weren't $0 out of pocket, I'll make sure that, you, hey, you have this money to, to come to closing with. But um, other than that, once it starts, we send Fast Track, hey, here, start it up. Um, they repair the property. They get with the investor, say, hey, this is what we did. Do you approve? The investor approves. We wire them more money. And it co it's a fraction of the time. The holding costs plummet when you do the no-draw loan. Has Johnny had any sweats or shaking because of the fact that he hasn't been able to watch the Mississippi State I, Bulldogs he, bat baseball? Or there was oh, I can't. I haven't oh. seen poor, poor Johnny. I haven't seen a selfie of him with multiple alcohol <laughs> cans and uh, in a baseball stadium in a couple of days. Been the same since they canceled yeah. college baseball. Yeah, I yeah. can tell. Poor jo Johnny, you got anything you want to come up and visit about? Uh, you yeah. good? <laughs> Anybody else have anything? I was. Rob, Rob, sure, we kind of want to wrap up in a few minutes, so let's get Rob up here. Anybody within 15 minutes of here, we got crawfish. Anybody wants to come in? Yeah, come on. Are you serious? Yep. Yeah. We have crawfish here tonight? Yep. Yeah. Not for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, even for you, Curse. Yeah, okay, maybe. Rob went and bought 30 pounds. Good job, R O B B. 30 pounds, so that's, that's three people. So, if you don't know, this is Rob Trigg. Curtis, Hi, always brother. a pleasure. Good to see Rich, you again. always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you for your doing? service, young man. Thank you. Thank so you. So, one thing that uh, everyone should know is that Rob recently had a child. I did. And you have not lost any of your baby weight. So. <laughs> actually, I've actually gained some because the <laughs> gym, do. the gym is like no more. Yeah. Like, so I, what I, are you my gym closed? What What are you doing about that? Let's I, talk about that. So basically what I do is uh, I, I try to go for a walk or something after work, get put her in a stroller, just do something just to kind of keep my heart rate going. But right now, I, there's no gym. So, so there are a yeah, bunch of posts. Close. I don't know if you've been watching that, but there's a bunch of posts about people up in arms about not being able to use the gym. Yeah. So what we came up with on our little guy thread is a, the COVID-19 challenge. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, I haven't heard this one. Fit, so you start it, you can start it today, and it's 50 burpees. Okay. You add five burpees every day until 
this it's over with. Yeah, until they open back up the restaurant. <laughs> until they open the, the Mexican food, that the mi- tacos. That actually might be a killer exercise in about three weeks. Yeah, so you do 50 burpees, add five burpees every day. You need to run at least one mile. You need to, and throughout the course of the day, try to get to where you're doing 50 push-ups. Ooh. No, sorry. The burpees counts as the push-ups. You do squats, 50 squats. Hmm. Uh, well, I would say uh, by the time that's over with, we're, uh, do you have to add to every? Nope. Uh, no, 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 no. Just Only the, the burpees. burpees. Okay. Only well, the by burpees. the time that's over with, you're going to be hurting. Well, I just think like a lot of people, do, like what are you doing to keep yourself fresh? And uh, other than, I mean, because watching the news is just boring. Oh, I, I turn it He's off. He's working. Uh, I'm working. I'm here closing loans. Okay. I, when I, m- my wife will turn on the news, I'll get up and go to the other room, and I got my laptop. I, I tell you, I don't shut it down typically till about eight o'clock. You know, I got my little girl right here, a bottle and a laptop, riding my ha- hand, just trying to, you know, either market for jet lending or answer questions or do whatever I can to keep us ahead of the curve. Are you still doing your daily videos? Oh, I, you know what? I've kind of laid off that for a, l- a little while, only because of. Well, you nobody know. watches them, so. No, I watch them. You built that. <laughs> you built that little drive-in well, to the work pro- every day. I know the problem. It went was from like that, seven people to twenty-five people. You. The, well, the problem was is that, and not to put my business out there, I was having a little bit of health issues in January and February, and it just kind of, it just kind of fell off. So I've got. I, I'm going to start it back up once because I have to have surgery in April. So once I get through that, on the other side of it, I'm going to start it up and do it in my office. You know, we've got the technology here to do it, and it won't be so shaky and stuff like that. So oh, y'all hot tech. Like oh, we are. Thanks to Alex. Alex. Alex is, came. Yeah, hey, I'm noticing I'm right all now, the videos now. Techie? I'm telling you right now. The videos now don't look like the the reverse side of an Android. I'm telling you right now. It's, it, Alex, guys, it's, is, it's weird. You're in a real nice, bright room somewhere, and you do a video, and you look dark. This room's kind of halfway dark, and we look normal because they yeah. got these high tech. Uh, I don't know some kind of high tech lighting going. Oh on yeah, here. I, my my hat goes off to Alex because he is he has transformed this company in the last five months. From it was very hard for us to work mobily. Now I I can literally sit at home on the weekends and order appraisals. Well, and and he's got a great mustache. He does. I'm hey, telling you. Speaking of ordering appraisals, I noticed that um, typically what would take me about five to seven days, which is a survey. Mm-hmm. I'm getting surveys now. It's like Quick. we ordered it yesterday. The people were out there today. Yeah. I like, might need people a are doing. People are going fast. You got a good uh, buddy that's a surveyor. I need a discount on a survey. I need. I just need to mark two corners of my house to build a fence. <laughs> you know anybody? <laughs> I need a good deal. <laughs> if anyone, I don't want to pay good... retail. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, uh, why don't we wrap this up? We've okay. been here a little bit. We're talking our faces off. It's uh, a little after seven. Okay. It's time for some and crawfish. And I'm hungry for some crawfish. Why don't you take us out of here? Hey everybody, listen. Uh, I... Okay, sorry. Eddie's oh, we gotta got bring Eddie to in. Don't let him talk though. We'll I, never I, get out of here. I just want to say once again to EG. Uh, uh, that uh, I will now have to hand sanitize my eyes after he took his shirt off. So go to my Facebook page and like that picture. No, no but please don't. You, you, all, you'll, you'll thank us if you don't. And, and, and Eddie's very passionate about real estate. And he's very passionate. He's as passionate as he is about real estate. Education and helping people are really what he's all about. So... Um, there was no one more pissed off that the RCC event wasn't going to happen than him. Uh, and not. I really think everybody should uh, send him, you know, thank you for putting this thing together. He helps out every month trying to make you guys more successful. He's made me successful just through our friendship. I think he's, I think he's made everybody in this room successful. Hey, uh, hey, myself. hey Nate Harris says, who wholesaled Eddie's shirt? <laughs> <laughs> he said, so, what? Uh, he said, what? Who wholesale We're going to get shirt? through this together, and we'll catch you <laughs> next time uh, at the RCC. Peace Take out. Take care, right. guys. Hold, 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 hold up. Hold. We got Cody, Kevin, Johnny in the background. Thank you all for y'all's support here. They, they, they just sitting in the background staring. They were sitting there looking. Ed, Johnny's just over there sitting there looking good. And we want to say, say thanks to Tony Robbins for...
for <laughs> watching in some guy named Grant Cardone. <laughs> um, That's Cardwan. Oh, Cardwan. Yeah. Yes. It's French. Yeah, yes. it's French. Yes. So ah, th we're out. thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.